Hello, welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl, and we're going to be looking at some more Warhammer the Old World stuff. So we're in the final stages of wrapping up our High Elven Realms faction focus series, and uh, while we're just wrapping that up, I thought I'd put a, uh, a few short videos out following some questions I had about uh, people interested in starting the game, and that kind of got me thinking about, you know, what are the top three like easiest factions to play, hardest factions to play. So, you know, hopefully this will be useful for people that currently only play a single faction or are new players, but, you know, in general, um, good for discussion as well. So this is completely based upon the rule set. So, you know, as a new player, there's other things to consider. So only five of the factions are currently available to get hold of the models straight off the Games Workshop store. So ease of getting into the hobby, you know, Bretonia and Tomb Kings have the starter boxes and so on. But this is this is looking at playing on the tabletop how easy the faction is to play just to you know build a list play a pickup game you know of course a very experienced player with a win at all costs list is going to dominate a, a, a newer player regardless of faction this is looking at average case scenarios um, of, of which factions are just easy to create a list and still um, have a good time and and come out with a, a reasonable result so let's take a look and see what we've got so first up then is the Warriors of Chaos, uh, a very straightforward army roster. It's based around melee combat and magic. Um, so always be closing with the enemy and getting into combat. You know, fairly straightforward. This army wants to be in combat. There's not too many shenanigans in terms of, you know, uh, missile troops and fire and flee and all that type of stuff. This is, you know, uh, all out combat, always be charging. The, uh, the, the, the units are actually pretty durable. They've got infantry characters, cavalry, monsters, all very, very durable um, and can be very forgiving um, in, in losing, you know, a few models but still being able to hit back hard. So overall, you know, they're, they're, it's almost a bit like an elite army in that way. Uh, you know, as a result, many of the units are expensive. And then you go initially, that is like, wow, they're, if they're really expensive in terms of points, I can't field that many. But... Actually, the low model count for a new player can be really, really useful because it means when they're maneuvering and moving, which, let's face it, is one of the critical phases of the game, and placing down even in deployment is much, much easier with small units. You know, they're less likely to block their own friendly units from either being able to get a charge in or or get line of sight of particular um, enemy models so uh, having small units actually can be a really good thing for a new player um, learning the game uh, and makes it easier to play with they've got a lot of monsters uh, with monstrous infantry they've got dragons chimeras manticores all of which perform you know reasonably well on the tabletop we know dragons with a uh, as, a, as a mount um, is, is really really strong but but all those monsters and monstrous infantry you know they perform reasonably well on the tabletop um, you know, none of them are like completely terrible choices so again you know just being able to put a list together with very little experience and go out on the tabletop and and have a, a good fun game without being you know completely smashed every time um, very much uh, in in the uh, warriors of chaos favor also most of the units are now available to buy the army's pretty much been fully released within reason you know you've got your battalion box you've got most of the basic units uh, and of course even uh, today uh, the marauders and the knights um, uh, are out as well so most of the units are now available uh, so it does make it a, a good starting choice so that's the first one. And this is in no particular order. This is just looking at the three of which I think if I was going to recommend a new player to pick up uh, and learn to play the game with, these are the ones I would from a rules perspective. Next up is the Kingdom of Bretonia. You know, cavalry right now is in a really strong position. Bretonia's got a lot of different choices of cavalry, from the, the, the mounted squires to the knights of the realm, the knights errant, questing knights, pegasus knights, you name it, they got a lot of cavalry. And the flavour of the army, the knights, the whole thing about cavalry is uh, the core theme of Bretonia, right? So it's kind of almost directing players down that path of, of going uh, along with cavalry. Um, and so, you know, that that really helps, say, a new player in, in getting to grips with the army. Also, if you're going down, you know, a, a very heavy cavalry army, 
It's incredibly mobile, uh, and that's really forgiving. You know, movement, as we said before, is absolutely key. So if your army is very mobile, very fast on the tabletop, if you get caught out of position, uh, it's very easy to correct that when you can move, you know, eight inches uh, as a normal move, plus then marching, charging, and so on. So um, it does make it a, a way more forgiving army when it is got speed. You've got good, clear, simple character choices. I mean, the unit roster is not massive. Um, so it, it's the, the synergies, you know, and synergies are key in when you're building any army list, and those aren't immediately ob obvious a lot of the time when you're first taking a look at the list or building a first list until you actually play the game. But with a limited roster that uh, Bretonia has, the characters are very clear in what they do. It's very easy to see the synergies across um, the army list. Um and, uh, and that definitely plays in its favour. I find Bretonnia a fairly easy army list to build um, and, and at least have some sort of clear idea in your mind how it's going to work. It's also one of the first released armies right along with Tomb King, so it's really easy to access the miniatures, assuming they're in stock. Plus, they also have a pretty reasonable starter box that comes with all the rules and all the bits you need to play the game. So, yeah, Bretonnia definitely in that top three. And finally um, is the High Elf Realms. Now, um, I've got, uh, you know, most of the armies in the game. I've played with most of the armies in the game with the exception of, like, Chaos Dwarfs and Ogre Kingdoms and so on. But uh, High Elves, I actually think, are... I wouldn't say they're a top-tier army, but they, um, they're they pretty... They're an average to above-average army, probably more above-average. And I do think that, that, that most of the units... Um, are pretty reasonable and they are quite an easy army to play when you build a list and still um, uh, enjoy. And they've got a good selection of units, right? They've got tons of different infantry choices from your from your basic core stuff. You've got your Sea Guard as hybrid. You've got your Sword Masters of Hoeth. You've got your Phoenix Guard. You've got Shadow Warriors. I mean, there's just so much choice there. You've got Cavalry. we got Light Cavalry with the Illyrian Reavers, Silver Helms, Dragon Princes. You've got two different types of chariots. You've got monsters in Phoenixes and Dragons and that sort of stuff. So, you know, with that sort of broad selection, it does allow the player to tailor to their play style quite easily um, because they've got a good choice in all the different sections and all those choices are pretty reasonable again you know not quite the the movement and mobility that you get out of a bretonian cavalry army but they've got a high movement for their infantry as well you know they've got one inch more and that one inch can make a difference again it does help that newer player when your army is able to move faster um, than the enemy also, in the, with the high elves, and in fact with a lot of the elven armies, they've got high initiative across the whole army, normally with the exception of monsters, right? Um, and that's also very forgiving for a new player, ensuring that even when they make mistakes, they often will get to strike first, or at least if they get to a second round of combat, they'll be striking first if they got charged. And that can really help because, of course, you know, you get, get to strike first, and, uh, and that's less damage coming back your way. So high initiative, high movement, I think being really key elements to making an army easier to play for the less experienced player. Also, the centerpiece of High Elves um, is, is a prince on a dragon. I mean, you know, everyone likes to have a cool model in their armies, you know, whatever it is, whether it's some kind of monster, you know, back in the days of, of, of uh, undead vampire counts, you know, having a Nagash or one of the Mortarks, you know, all of that sort of stuff, having one of these big, you know, monsters with your, with your lord on it, you know, it looks cool. But in the case of the High Elves, that prince on dragon is an excellent unit. So you've got a new player who's looking an army, wants a cool model, he's going to probably go for a prince and a dragon. So he takes that, puts it in his army, and, you know, these things are not cheap, right? They take a huge amount of points on your army, and often that can be, you know, wasted points. It's not very efficient. Uh, you lose that unit and you're kind of screwed. But actually the prince on dragon is really strong, um, and, and that, again, really helps. So even though you're kind of, your eyes are drawn to, oh, I need this cool unit, it's still going to perform well. And you've got to get really unlucky um, to lose it early in the game. So, um, yeah, High Elves, for me, definitely make that top three of being, with their rules, with their base rules, um, easy to play armies um, on the tabletop. Uh, and uh, next, we're going to be taking a look at which the 
my top three hardest armies to play for. Short video, but if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to keep seeing more content, and there is plenty more content to come, please hit that subscribe button. It's totally free for you to do, and it means a lot for me. So thank you for that in advance. You've been watching The Ghost Dow. Tune back in, and we take a look at the top three hardest armies to play.